Alright, so I'm going to show you an MS-660 and how I got the one I had to run so well and what I did to make it run that way. And we're going to do the timing of it, of what it comes out to. And this was the best case scenario I could find while keeping everything pretty close to what it needs to be. <clears throat> so, this is an MS-660. This is the 56 millimeter piston. All right, so, and here's something to understand. The squish value that's up here on a factory one of these is anywhere between 1.6 to 1.8 millimeters, and it's very misunderstood by a lot of people. A lot of people think it needs to be 0 0.6, 0 0.8, you know, in that area. That is not true for these saw builds. Um, by design, they were designed to have that gap there. So uh, people will have the pop-up piston that fills this section to change the compression and stuff. But by design, that's the actual squish value of these. And when you go past that, this is one of the major things I've heard. Now mine is 1.5 millimeters. And if you see right at the edge, mine is just below the exhaust port, okay? If you went any higher up, you're actually going to have the exhaust port open into the bottom end. Okay? So if you do that, that's it. It's done. <laughs> now the second biggest thing too, that's a big killer of these, is the duration of this. You don't want to widen this and change it. I see a lot of people do it. And you got to understand how this works. When it's at this point... This is compression stage right here, okay? Now as this thing is flying down, you gotta realize the volume of this crankcase is um, two thirds the size of the actual 660 saw. So as this piston's coming down, it's compressing this one third more than normal, the volume that it's trying to draw in from the piston. So, in reality, what happens is, is when you widen this and such, if you're not using a reed valve and all that, but if you widen this and all that, it's actually going to slam down and start blowing back some of the stuff. Because it's just so much volume, so much compression. Okay? So you really don't want to widen this because you actually end up losing power. Believe it or not. The first one I did changed it and not, not very good. You keep it stock, don't mess with it. You really don't want that. You want this the lowest duration open possible, really. Unless you're going to be doing a reed valve and stuff, then you can do whatever the hell you want to it. So, anyways, the way that I ended up doing this is most people use a YD100 rod. I tossed it. I used a, a Husqvarna. Uh, 760 rod in mine so it's a little bit longer I think it's 120 millimeters versus the 116 and when I cut my jug I didn't have to chop off as much now there's a another bonus to that too and I'll show you in a minute when I cut mine I think I cut about four millimeters off it roughly somewhere in that area um, if you use the YD100 with the 40 millimeter crank you need to go like another four point something millimeters so what happens is, is your piston will actually drop about yay far like what is it right about in there about yay far will be hanging out of your piston and you gotta remember this is longer too so your piston would be even lower so just keep that in mind but uh yeah, you really want a 120 millimeter rod. That's the biggest key to making one of these run correctly. So anyways, with all that said, let's toss a timing wheel on it. And I'll show you what the timing is on this one. Alright. That's 0.6 millimeters right there from the top. And as you can see... That piston is no longer sealing that exhaust port. So I just wanted to show you that. Um, you really want at least 
about that much which is about two millimeters to cover it otherwise you're gonna have a leakage problem um, another thing to mention since these are actually supposed to be spaced about like that which is about 1.6 millimeter it's roughly about that you can buy a pop-up piston which will fill this volume up and that is how people in general make these higher compression you don't want to change this value because it's going to cause a bad day now the other thing too to note is if you guys notice they usually don't smooth out the top right up to the thing and if you notice that's why see that that band right there all right well that's actually about one and a half millimeters tall and it's because the piston isn't even supposed to go up that tall so i just wanted to explain that but yeah i mean that's why they're made the way they are but yeah you can clearly even see the stop point because the rings will stop somewhere down in here so yeah when it's let's see about there so you can see where the rings will stop and you can see where they stopped smoothing out the bore because the rings will be below this and the piston will be somewhere up here to top of it so anyways I hope that helps and explains it a little more but you can always get a pop-up piston or one of the domed ones or whatever to fill the void if you really want to go that route but honestly you just don't need it for a bicycle build so ideally we're gonna go and right here my exhaust is just about to open we're at a hundred let's see right there so we're at 132 when the uh, transfer is opening. So that's 32 degrees roughly. So we're gonna go, that's bottom. And it's Pretty damn close to level there. So we're going to go up. The uh, transfer port is closing. Exhaust port is now closed. Alright. So the intake is opening up at about... From bottom, let's see, about 92, isn't there? It's fully open by 30, and we went past that, back down, and it's fully closed at 92. So, I hope that. Uh, Gives you all a little insight on how to make one of these. But this was the best case scenario. You really need a 120 millimeter rod. Uh, it's the only way to get all these ports and stuff to line up with the correct squish value. With a 40 millimeter crank. If you use a 42 millimeter crank, um, it will, even with a YD100, it'll pass the exhaust port or it'll dwell way too long at the bottom all right guys and just to show you guys the pure difference okay uh this is a yd100 connection rod i threw it in for you and i hope you can see the gap up there all right now as you can see there's over four millimeters like i was saying i only deck this at four point something millimeters normally people cut about eight off these okay that that step is usually gone so this is with a yd100 rod now just imagine this now you're missing four millimeters of this now i got it on this 40 millimeter crank 
Now you look at where that piston is and imagine that next four millimeters gone. Look at how much of that piston is ringing at the bottom of that. Now this, I can jiggle it just because it's in that deep. And you got four millimeters to remove. So that's one of the biggest mistakes that people use these YD100 connection rods on these. That's, that's a big no-no. <laughs> so, with that said, if I drop this down, yeah, the timing of these would be pretty close. But, uh, yeah, I mean, there's definitely some issues using a YD100 connection rod. But, as you can see, my piston with a YD100 connection rod is, oh god, it's six point something millimeters, I believe, from the top of that. So easily, easily six millimeters. But uh, yeah, I mean, I started out at 1.5, I think, with the other one. So uh, just something to keep in mind when you're doing these. Now, if you use a 42 millimeter crank with these, or 44, which a lot of people will do, um, what happens also is you're going to push this piston up to the top, but then you're going to pass the exhaust port again. So there's there's always going to be a downside. This is just not intended to fit on these and for the values that it's made for right out of the gate. Okay? So I hope that explains a little bit. But if you do the rod right, and you measure it, and you do all this right, and you don't go crazy lopping it off like most people do, and gutting all the ports and stuff, because that's usually what causes the power actually to go They widen this out, and this piston is just so damn big for this crankcase, it just blows it right back out the exhaust. Now, if you use a reed valve, you can solve that problem. Easy. And that's one of the big reasons why on the MS460, I really enjoy the reed valve. Because I don't get as much of the blowout problem. Um, but this right here, if you hear it moving in there, that's going to cause piston ring. And the fact that most people are going to cut another 4mm off, that's even more of this hanging out. So I'll do a video of an extreme one. I'm going to put a, a tiny rod on this to get it down and stuff. Just so you could kind of see what I was talking about, about piston ring. Just an idea anyway. So, okay, cool. Peace out. Hope this helps some people. So I just wanted to compare these just so you can see the link difference. So I hope that helps someone so they can get an idea what we're looking at here. All right. I just put this really short rod in here just for principle here. When you had that YD100 rod on here and you cut all that off the bottom and all that good stuff, you're going to have a big section of piston hanging out. Okay? Unlike the rod that I used to get the timing correct. So, if you see this, that's going to happen if you use a YD100 crank assembly. Okay? Like most are doing and cutting all that 8 millimeters off. That's called piston ring. You will hear a ringing sound as the piston slaps coming back up. Okay? Now when it's in this cylinder, see? It does not wobble. 